We are such a young party at the national level. I mean, I think most people don't realize that we didn't form as a national party until two years after the Nader run in 2000. That at the time that Nader ran, we were still just a bunch of state committees. And uh, as an FEC recognized Green Party, they didn't start until 2002. And uh, when I came there to Washington, D.C. as the political director, and that was on February 11th of 2004, you know, I, I got there and I was just kind of appalled at where we were at organizationally. And uh, it's like, well, we've got some work to do. And there were three new directors that had started at that time. And so we started working together to really start to build the infrastructure of a national party. And I think in 2000, we really rode on Nader's uh, coattails. I mean, he already had the, that infrastructure through his organizations. And so now our challenge is for us to build that infrastructure for ourselves. And I feel like we've come a long way since then. Um, there, there is, um, one is things like building your database, building your contacts around the country. Uh, it's building a presence in Washington, D.C. It's being part of a network um, of, of like-minded organizations and, and working together. That stuff all takes time. And we're still a, a pretty young party. In the overall, even though Greens have been organized in the U.S. for 23 years, as a national party, we're four to five years old. That's it. The Green Party is less top-down than what the, what the DLC or the RNC is. And uh, basically, the national party is an association of state committees. And it's not a, not a membership-based organization other than the members are the state committees. So in essence, the states are really where the, the uh, main decision-making is made. Is it, is it, and the representatives from the states then come to the, what's called the National Committee, which is the highest decision-making body, but the states control that. The, uh, the process that Greens go through to, to choose their presidential candidate is really different from the way the two major parties uh, choose their presidential candidates. That's not to say there wasn't a time when they would have done a similar process to what that we do now, so that when folks see our national nominating convention, it's a real convention. It's not a coronation. We really are selecting our presidential candidate at our nominating convention. It's not this staged you know, entertainment event. So um, what you see are candidates who have reached out to the states. They may have taken part in a primary, or they may have taken part in uh, a convention for that state. And then, and then each of those states sends their delegates to a national meeting. And that's where we choose our candidates, at the national meeting. So what you see is what you get. It's the real thing. Uh, one of the major challenges in choosing who will represent you as your presidential candidate is you want somebody that understands your values and can articulate them well to the general public. You also want somebody, uh, in my opinion, you want somebody that has some name recognition because you don't want to be spending the entire presidential campaign just building name recognition. So you want, you'd like to attract in people that have some name recognition, that already have some, something of a following. Um, you need somebody that's going to... Uh, stay in there for the whole fight, who isn't going to bow under pressure. And, we, and believe me, we get put under immense pressure. So you need someone who, in my opinion, has a pretty thick hide. They've, they've, been, they've already been through baptism by fire, and they know what it's like. This is not going to be a new experience for them. So you want someone who uh, will hang in there when the going gets tough. One of my hopes for the Green Party as we kind of break out of this uh, one-party duopoly because it really is. I mean, they've kind of divvied up the country. Like you go one area, it's all Democrat, another area, it's all Republican in terms of dominance. Is we're really trying to build a, uh, a real opposition party. And oftentimes the way that works out is the Greens are becoming the opposition party to Democrats in the urban areas, and we're becoming the opposition party to Republicans in the rural areas. Because what we have is a populist message, not a liberal message. And there's, a, there's an important difference between the two. Uh, for example, what, what people find out about Greens once they hold office is that we're fiscally responsible. And it's been a long time since people have seen that. And uh, um, that in fact, uh, um, they find that we didn't nationalize the banks, that in fact we, we uh, uh, have worked hard to work within our means. And believe me, if you want to meet some frugal people, talk to Greens. We're the most frugal people you'll ever meet in terms of making stuff stretch as far as it can stretch. I mean, I don't know anybody as frugal as Green. So, but, but until people see us in office, they don't really get that. You know? And then they see us and they go, oh, these people are really responsible. And so for me, the most important thing is we got to get more Greens elected to office. Because once they see us govern, once they see what we do, they say, hey, that's, uh, you know, that's just common sense what they're doing.